That's it. That is Pambo Island. So, the treasure is here? Well, uh, we have to go to that cave yonder. It's really pitch black in there. Wait a minute. You've been here before? No time to waste. We need light. Malty, grab the will-the-wisp. Is that the treasure? A leather bag? Uh, what? Yes! I mean, no, not quite. But it is exactly what we have been looking for. What we've been looking for? But we've been looking for the treasure of eternal memory. Yes, right. And you said it was right here. So where is it? Don't be so impatient now. What's in the bag? That's... Um, it's complicated. We need to get this to Meganelli Palms right away! What? Why? What's in there? Oh, you don't understand anything about that. Trust me. With all the great treasures I've already found... But... what's in the bag? No! Cleo, wait! Books? There's only a few books in here. Cleo, please! Logbook of the fearless adventurer Captain Avery Alwick? Logbook number five? Today I killed the last Cyclops crab. I can't even count how many there were in total. Maybe a dozen? Or more? Be careful with that, please! Logbook number two. I was followed by the black giant iguana for weeks. If I had not paid attention for even a moment, I would have been dead on the spot. What? What is this? It's mine! Give it back! Let go! Hello, Frenzy. My name is Kate Shark, and welcome back to Cleo, A Pirate's Tale. So, we got through the nautical fog, and... What do we do now? <sighs> we are going to die here, Cleo. We are going to starve. We are going to die of thirst. If one of us is lucky, he will be struck by lightning. And then that's it. That's it? Aye, it's over. But you fought undead skeletons. Cleo... You survived a cyclops crab, and a giant black iguana. Listen to me. And now you're just giving up? Just like that? No, there must be a way. So, tell me, what, what do we do now? Cleo, these are all just stories. What? What do you mean? Made up stories, don't you understand? No cyclops crabs, no giant iguana. It's all just make-believe. Only once in my life have I been in mortal danger and on my own. And that was right here, on this island. And guess what? I didn't survive. So you died here on Pambu Island? Well, not exactly. Rather trying to escape from this island. I spent many days here and managed to build a small raft. But I can tell you, without a will-the-wisp to show you the way, you'll never get out of this fog. Face it, we're gonna die here, and we will be forgotten forever. So, Captain Quebec's ambush, that was just a lie? What is a lie, Cleo? There is no clear line between the truth and a lie. Uh... The details were perhaps a little different, but in the end, Quebec left me for dead, right here. On Pambo Island. So, Quebec was a great adventurer after all. Heh, <laughs> call him what you want. Like many others, he was looking for the treasure of eternal memory. He searched for years, following every lead he could find. He found countless other, smaller treasures in the process. He got famous and loved the attention it got him. So he decided to hire a writer to accompany him on his adventures and write and embellish his story. Embellish? An excavated skull turned into half a dozen undead skeletons. An annoying bee into a deadly flying beast. Those kinds of things. Oh, I see. I mean... And that was you, Quebec's writer. All the stories I've read about Quebec, you wrote them. 
I, the book series, Take Away, Get Away, should have been my life's work. My masterpiece, my big breakthrough as a writer. But much more, it became my curse, my death sentence. Does this treasure of eternal memory even exist? I asked myself that many times. But it can't just be a myth. There must be something to it. But it wasn't the treasure that was buried here, that's for sure. Tell me the whole story. Why did Quebeca leave you behind? I've been by Quebeca's side in his treasure hunt for years. Ah, the pay was bad. For years I had to watch that bugger dig up chests of gold with my help and keep everything to himself. And every day I had to write down how brave, bold, and heroic he was. I couldn't wait for him to finally find this one treasure so that he could finally achieve the big goal and that I could end my book series with a worthy finale. Then Kabeka found something interesting. Teddy McAnally had been on Pambo Island shortly before his death. McAnally had gotten himself a will-the-wisp and sailed into the nautical fog with a shipload of gold. It just had to be it. But Kabeka found a will-the-wisp on Fluffkey Island, and we sailed to Pambo Island. And indeed, we found a huge treasure here, countless chests of gold. But it is said that when you have found the treasure of eternal memory, a feeling of infinite happiness would overcome you. A feeling of endless contentment, of redemption. But nothing like that happened. Just chests full of gold coins, as always. Kabeka was furious. It's my fucking fault. He ordered me to haul the giant treasure chests aboard his ship and left me alone in the cave. With the treasure. Unsupervised, do you understand? So you pocketed some? A single some? coin. No more. I only put a single coin in my pocket before I brought the chests on board. But Kebeka noticed. Even worse, his stupid monkey saw it. That lousy primate that he called me Lily had given him. Wait a minute. Wait, Captain Kebeka got a Ponzo from that creepy basement granny? Aye, a Ponzo. <laughs> The monkey was his sidekick. The monkey had to appear in every story. Aponzo, bring me the map. Aponzo, pull the secret lever. Aponzo, Aponzo. Uh. But you and really me, Aponzo. I was sentenced to death on this island for a single gold coin. Huh. And the log books? I had nothing with me on this island except my bag with seven blank notebooks and the bloody gold coin. None of that helped me survive even a second longer on this stupid parched island. And I knew that if I died here, no one would remember me. I was nobody. Everything I had written and published was about Captain Kabeka and his darn monkey. So you made up your own adventures. Should anyone ever come to this island again? They would find my logbooks. Then, people would remember me. You just wanted to come here to get the logbooks? To bring them to McAnally Palms and publish them. That's all I wanted. But now I'm stuck on this island. Again. We must be able to get out of here somehow. I've tried, Cleo. No chance. In the nautical fog, <laughs> you'll lose your bearings, and sooner or later, you'll be right back at this island. <laughs> Without a will the wisp to show you the way, you just can't get out of here. I'm not giving up. I'll come up with something. Do what you want, but please leave me alone. When I was here the first time, I still had hope, too. I'm tired of telling stories, Cleo. I'll die here for the second time. <sighs> It really can't get any worse now, can it? Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, Avery told me the truth, who knows not much of an adventure, blah, 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 this is all his fault. Okay, hold on. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Fresh rainwater, yeah? The coconut shell is now full to the brim with clear rainwater. Got it, got it, because I needed that for... You can't see your hand in front of your face in there. I can't go in there like that. Fine. 
could be usable. Okay. So we got some rain water. What's this? A the huge tree. tree that grew at the highest point of the island. Looks spooky. Spooky. Okay, now I know the rainwater was pertinent because we needed it for need rainwater coffee. Okay. Hello. You look like you could use a drink. Need rainwater. Coffee. A coffee to know. Fantastic choice. Coming right away. At least you can rely on the cocktail machine. All right, then. So let's see here. So, what if, if you said we can't go in that way, just fine. You can't see your hand in front of, I can't go in there. What if, Get us out of this fog? Out? Out of the nautical fog? <laughs> no chance. Without the will of the whiff, we already would have been completely lost on our way here. I guess if we don't have a will of the whiff for a proper replacement, we're stuck here. Okay. Any idea on what we're gonna do now? I bumped my head quite a bit. I can't focus at all. But uh, you'll think of something, won't you? Yeah, I hope so. Unfortunately, I don't even know where to start. If I don't know what to do next, I usually mix myself a cocktail. There is no problem that a cocktail can't solve. Really? A cocktail? Think about it. Okay. Really? No chance to get out of the fog? Without a will o' the wisp for a proper replacement? No, not a chance. Okay. Oh. Can I give him that? Nope. There we go. Or not. Enjoy at high altitude. Excuse me. So. A huge tree that looks. Can I climb it? Ah, there we All go. All right, then. Show me what you got. Coffee to know. 14-year-old drinking mead. Is it the what do they call so it? Focused. But down in the underground. Teddy Mickenary, the legend about the treasure of eternal memory, started with him. Sent to death on this island for a single 
gold coin. Darn. I can't get any further here. Feels like something is missing. Shit. Oh man, what a trip. The lightning struck directly into this tree. Well, that was really close. The light. Well, can that? You can't see her. I can't go. Wait, wait, wait. Do I have something I could use? Oh. Mm, I think something is still. Okay. Wait, 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 where's the earphone? Darn! He's too quick! Darn! He's too- Darn! He's too quick! I can't get a hold of him. Okay, I don't know what the worm's gonna do. He's too- Fuck. Could I... Hmm. You can't- I can't go- Just, just fine. Okay. Okay. I don't know what else to do. Let's see. Oh, that's probably the anchor, Duck Kate. I don't know how I'm supposed to catch that worm. Mm, I think. So. Oh, Bridge here caught fire. Cool. So I can use that as a light, yes. Hmm. Let's We have to go to that cave yonder. It's really this wagon there. Strange. I can still hear those voices in my head. Must be those side effects mentioned in Multi's cocktail book. Hey, wait, there's something under this shovel. A gold must be left over oh. from the treasure. Hmm. I'm sure I've seen this imprint on a coin somewhere before. Wasn't it on the ticket? Yeah. Can we use a shovel? Uh, there goes the torch. Well, there's that. But I can use the shovel on the earthworm. Yes. There we go. Gotcha. Okay. Look at worm. I'm hole. sure there's still a whole earthworm family down there. Oh wait, do I not have my? You're officially bored. Okay. The lightning. Well. So what do we try to drink again? All right, that show me what you got. Coffee to know. Okay, let's see what happens. Go back into the underworld or whatever the fuck they call it. I can't remember. Upside down is what they called it on Stranger Things. But down in the underground, you'll find someone true. Teddy Mikino, the legend about the treasure of eternal memory, started. Teddy McAnally had been on Cambo Island shortly before his death. Let's get that treasure! Multi, set the sails to Cambo Island! 
Ashley was sentenced to death on this island for a single gold coin. I'm sure I've seen this imprint on a coin somewhere before. Welcome to Adelantis, the sunken gallery of very rare items. That's it. The gold coins that Teddy McAnally buried here before he died are from Adelantis. How is it all connected? Back there is McAnally's original Kraken Father set. My great grandfather brought it to this collection. Must have cost him a fortune, let me tell you something. The real treasures are never out of gold coins. It must have been right in front of your nose, dear. You, you just haven't noticed it yet. It's all connected. In the end, the big picture forms a circle. Like sushi! <laughs> ah, you will see. Namaste. For all the gold that McAnally buried here, he sold his Kraken fodder set to Adelantis. The treasure of eternal memory is the set. Or it's in the set. I have to tell Avery that. Hey, wait a minute! Hmm? The earthworm has nibbled on the glowing mushrooms in my inventory. So now it's glowing worm, and it would work. The Kraken fodder set. Hmm? The treasure of eternal memory must have something to do with Teddy McAnally, right? Mm-hmm. The gold coins that were buried here are not the treasure. But have you ever wondered where the gold came from? McAnally was filthy rich. He invented uh -oh. Kraken fodder. This is nothing new, Cleo. The coins have an imprint of Atilantis, Avery. What? McAnally sold his Kraken fodder set to Atilantis shortly before his death. And the gold he got for it, he buried here. You mean... I am almost sure that the treasure of eternal memory is in that Kraken fodder set. Or it just is the set. Or it's just a hint hidden in the set. But it must have something to do with it. The treasure of eternal memory was within our grasp? And we sailed to this island to die here. Oh, now shut your pessimistic beak. It's unbearable. I can think of something. If you want me to remind you of our hopeless situation, you know where to find me. Okay, but I know exactly what we can do. We can use seems to like it so what if we use the worm if you want you know if you want you know ah, blah, blah 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 you're boring wait what's that were those fish there before hey there's a shoal of fish gathering looks like the fish are about to leave at any moment a huge shoal of fish swims directly to Animal Bay every night. I don't know where they all come from. Hmm. That could be useful. What if? Good idea. But a single earthworm will probably not be enough. So if there's a whole mess of them... I'm sure the <laughs> I knew it. A whole family of ferocious earthworms. I can see you. Well then. <laughs> okay, so we have a whole bunch of these little earthworms here. We'll give them to the fish. Hey, fizzy, fizzy, fizzy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Ugh. I, I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> Bingo. Yes! It worked! Okay, so now... 
Avery, I have a solution to escape from here. What? How? That glowing shoal of fish over there will take us right out of here. Cleo's plan worked. The glowing fish started moving and led the attempt 38 out of the nautical fog towards Panamu Bay on Macanelli Palms. A little later, Cleo entered the sunken gallery of Atalantis again. Darn. Where is this guy? I have to get the Kraken fodder set somehow. Oh god. Um... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Was it seven? I can't go. I have to. I can't go. I have to. I'm trying to think how to sit this. Sixteen fifty two. Okay, bingo. Bingo. Not hard at all. You just gotta look for five seconds. Cleo opened Macinelli's crack and fodder set and found something strange in it. It looked like a luminous index card. But before Cleo could take a closer look at it... Jeez. 
Jeez. You? Have you been after the treasure yourself the whole time? But how could you know so quickly where- My bowl full of glass eyes. My eyes are everywhere. There was even one in the monkey named Aponzo. And one is in a talking parrot. <laughs> now I've forgotten his name again. Avery! A flapping, gabbling spyglass! That's all this bird is to me. You were watching me through Avery the whole time? Through my mirrors, to be precise. Yes. I saw everything, and most of it was pretty pathetic, to be honest. But somehow you actually managed to find the treasure. I've got to give you that one. Avery, what did you do to Avery? Who? Oh, the ugly bird, right. When he saw me, he fluttered away heroically. If I were you, I would have another serious word with him. If you still get the chance, that is. <laughs> the treasure of eternal memory? You wanted it for yourself all along? But why? To become famous yourself? To become famous? Famous? Huh. You understand nothing at all, you simple-minded, silly thing. All of you are all about getting famous. As many people as possible should know your names, right? Your great heroic deeds should be remembered for generations. But what deeds, Cleo? What kind of heroic adventure have you already experienced? You scared off a stupid beaver with a jawbreaker. You dug up a handful of earthworms. I mean... And in your tall tales, they turn into terrifying monsters and enormous treasures. But I survived the Kraken! And you said that would mean that... That you are the chosen one? That only you could find the treasure? Oh dear, I've said that to so many arrogant, self-proclaimed adventurers. And everyone immediately went head over heels in search of the treasure. Your beloved Captain Kabaka was one of them, by the way. <laughs> the Kraken doesn't bring me chosen ones, don't you get that? He brings me daydreamers who can be easily manipulated. Gullible people who really believe they could be destined for something special. You made me look for the treasure? To then steal it from me and get rid of me? This glowing piece of paper must be worth a lot, huh? Index card, not just a piece of paper. And believe me, it is. Not necessarily for you or anyone up here, but to me, it means everything. Up here? And you're wrong about one thing, Cleo. I did not take the treasure away from you. The index card is still in your pocket, and you will deliver it for me in the afterlife. What? Uh, let me put it very clearly. You won't get famous, and neither will I. But I'm not interested in becoming famous anyway. I just want to work in peace again. My work in the afterlife has always been flawless. Everything was in order. Everything had its place. Managing the death cards was my life. Create, check, archive, shred. Everything on time. <laughs> I had everything under control. Everything was in order. Until the day. The day Teddy McAnally died for the first time. He was there. He was right in front of me when I created his death card. And then, all of a sudden, he was gone. And his death card, too. That lousy anarchist. He somehow managed to steal it from the afterlife and thus turn everything upside down. And me, I was banished from the afterlife's administration because of the missing index card. Even worse. I was banished from the afterlife. I swore I'd find Teddy McAnilly. And a few months later, I found him. Unfortunately, too late. 
He got away from me again. But I knew he must have hidden the index card up here somewhere. Just where? Oh. I came up with the legend of the treasure of eternal memory in order to send naive adventurers on a search for me. Dozens of adventurers over decades. I almost gave up hope. But then suddenly this adventurous, soaked, cynical girl stood in front of me. What happens when Machinelli's death card is in the afterlife again? I can finally go back to work again. And I can tell you one thing for sure. I will do my administrative work more efficiently than ever before. <laughs> Not until Teddy's death card is back in the administration. Oh, I miss the afterlife. Well, if you found it, why couldn't you just so go? What is so great about the afterlife? What's so great about being up here? Mm. It's so messed up. Mm. It's impossible to keep track. In this tangle, it's impossible to tell right from wrong. Truth from lie. To distinguish between important and unimportant, isn't it? There is absolute chaos up here, and nobody controls it. I've seen people here eating their pizza with pineapples, darn it. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> what do you want to do, kid? Spit on me with a jawbreaker? Do you want to stun me with your Stearman's alcohol fumes? Throw a glowing earthworm at me? Face it, you are not a threat to me. You are not a chosen adventurer. You're not even worth a side note in a story. So, are you ready for your final adventure? Captain Cleo and a death by drowning. <laughs> so, take another deep breath, because this will be breathtaking. And here we go! <laughs> Oh. 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 I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. I'm new. Shit. Oh crap. I can show you how to untie any knot in seconds. Do you want to know how that works? Yes. Did I die? Where... where am I? Okay, hang on one second here. Okay. Keep going for the afterlife. Okay. So, let's see. That went What there. are these strange filing cabinets? And there are these bluish lights everywhere. Scary. Okay. So can I... Oh. What do you think you're doing? Has anyone called you? Um, no. Then why are you bursting in here? 
It's not your turn yet. Don't Wait think so. a moment. I still need to get this done. Ah, <sighs> so where was I? Hello? My halo has been activated. I think this must be a mistake. I, uh... The time has come, Frederick. You know the rules. But my great-grandchildren... Have they... Forgotten you? Jeez. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm really busy, so... But... But... So, now it's your turn. Please? Hey! Do you think it's... Hey! It's... Fine. Um, hi. Welcome to the afterlife. You are now in the afterlife's administration. Before I can allow you to indulge in the joys of your dead as a doornail existence, a few formalities have to be made clear. My name is Archibald, and I am responsible for managing your death card. M managing my death card? This holy mandate gives me the right to dispose of your death card, and, if necessary, to destroy it using a shredder. Please, read the holy mandate carefully but quickly, and please do not damage it in any way. Let me know when you are ready. This holy mandate grants authority to create death cards. And should one of the following two cases occur, to irrevocably destroy it. Case 1. There are no more positive memories of the deceased among the living. Case 2. The deceased attracts negative attention in one way or another. <laughs> that sounds pretty arbitrary. It is! And as long as I have this holy mandate, it is subject to my arbitrariness. So please, behave. Okay, next point. Take that. You are obliged to always carry this halo with you in order to be available. What happened to that poor man? Oh, he was archived. His time here was up. The afterlife also has its capacity limits, gotcha. you see. Am I really... dead? Oh, yes, of course. Otherwise, I wouldn't be responsible for you at all. So, no heaven and hell, huh? Oh, nonsense. There's nothing like that here. <laughs> and no eternal torment and purgatory and stuff? Oh, yes. That does exist, but only self-proclaimed cyclists who believe they don't have to use the bike path end up there. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> so... What do you mean by available? That thing will blink and beep and vibrate when you are being contacted. You know, like in those pseudo-Italian fast food restaurants. Pseudo-Italian. you have to report <laughs> to the afterlife's administration immediately. Like that poor guy from before? Aha! You are slowly starting to think for yourself. That's good, because I don't have a lot of time. Can I go now? You can leave immediately. I, um, I just have to ask you to empty your pockets completely. No safety precaution. There were some incidents in the... Uh, what the? Is that what I think it is? You... You've had near-death Teddy's death card in your pocket the whole time, and you didn't say a word? Good gracious. What, uh, what do I do now? Wait a moment. I have to read the protocol. Exception protocol. Exception protocol. Exception protocol. Exception protocol. Exception protocol! The death card is back in the administration! I repeat, Teddy McAnally's death card is back in the administration. You can go now. Now! 
What you doing, bub? Hmm. Poor old man. Get out of here! Don't yell at me. Well, this is different. Hey, hey, slow down! You can't just walk in here like that. What is this place? Oh, you just got here, right? This is Teddy's, the hippest bar in the afterlife. Well, the uh, only bar in the afterlife. The only? How come? It's uh, actually strictly forbidden to open a bar like that. Usually punished by immediate archiving. But the uh, founder of this bar, near death Teddy, eh, tricked the system. Yeah, Teddy McAnally, right? Made his death car disappear. I heard about that. Correct. Well, fortunately for uh, all of us, near death Teddy can do whatever he wants down here. So he opened this bar. Why a bar of all places? Uh, Teddy said he wanted to create a place of uh, exchange here. Uh, a place for everyone. No distinctions made here. No judgments made here. Nothing is uh, well, expected of you here. It's a peaceful place where everyone can just chat, drink, and listen to each other. So, can I go in? No. Why not? Well, it's the Teddies, after all. And that means what? Well, you have to beat me at Kraken Fodder. Then you can go in. I thought nothing was expected of me here. Well, it's not entirely consistent, I admit. But that's the way the rules are. If there's nothing else, let's do this. I got him. The opponent has lost. Sweet. Ah, oh, you were supposed to. Okay. Oh, wait. gonna win, I know that, but that's okay. Oh, shit. Uh... You can't or refuse to attack your opponent. He can now decide whether he wants to destroy your card. Or Why does he get to decide? Well, I get all my. Fuck! Why is he getting such good rolls? Bingo. 
shit. Wow, that was close. How was it a draw? It's a draw. But you have to. If there's nothing. Shit. They're gonna win. You have to win it, so. <laughs> you mean without you? Uh uh. I'll come. What? Okay, so let's see here. See if there's anywhere else we can go. So, this is the afterlife. And my new home. I guess that's all we can do is just do it until he'll let me. Okay. Fine. No. If they're okay, so let's try this. Ugh, okay, there we go. There we go. Are you kidding me? How did he?
fuck. Damn it. Why does he keep getting... Let me check those dice. Fucking A. Of course. all of his or three please 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 yes okay that's one let's do two Bingo, I win. <clears throat> okay, finally. Glad I didn't quit. I consider quitting. Well played, young lady. Have fun at the teddies. <laughs> Kraken Fodder veteran. Oh. This is Butt Hair Pete. Butt Hair Pete. Pete! Hey, Pete! <laughs> The two are totally engrossed in conversation. Oh, that's the... Hey, guys. Ugh, you again. I knew you would bring bad luck to us. Yeah, exactly. Away with you, you plate bird. So, if you didn't know, back in pirate days, they didn't like women being on the ship because they thought they brought bad luck. Um, which is ironic considering some of the most successful pirates were women. So, <laughs> Frank? Oh, I guess that explains why he didn't finish his drink. Looks familiar to me for some reason. Hello? doesn't matter. You're already dead. Don't worry. It's you, right? Captain Quebeca? I've read all the books about you! I am really your biggest fan! Psst! Not so loud! What are you doing here? I guess the same thing everyone else is doing down here. You, me, good Antonio over there. We enjoy the rest of the time we have in the afterlife, right? Until we are forgotten. You will never be forgotten! You're a legend! Psst, okay, okay! Oh, uh, I met your book writer. Ivory Alwick? Oh, impossible! Yes, really! Well, shiver me timbers, and he managed to escape from Pambo Island. But, well, um... I was wondering why I couldn't find him anywhere down here. Oh, thank heavens. That's a load off me mind. <laughs> it's a long story. I don't want to bore you with it, but thank you. I feel much better now. How did you die? Avery would probably have made an exciting story out of it. But in the end, I was just ingloriously killed by a snake. Bastards. A snake bite? Oh, no, no. The snake was not venomous at all. 
I tripped over it and fell inconveniently onto a coconut. Yeah, that story could be improved. <sighs> you know, I don't care anymore. I'll tell you something. As a child, I also read books, you know, about great adventurers, like you do. And I wanted to be such a glamorous character, too. All me life, I have been crazy about making these doing? stories look as glorious as possible. And I was successful. You know the books. Then, when I died a legend, came to the afterlife, and sat down here in Teddy's bar, I had time to think about me life. And do you know what I realized? What? I had stopped listening. What do you mean? You see, I was so caught up in my own story that I... I just didn't hear any other stories, you understand? Mm -hmm. I haven't really listened to anyone for a really long time. And here... Down here, nobody dares to tell their stories to me anymore. Why not? Why not? You know that pianist over there, right? Antonio Lotorendi. Boy, he's probably the best and most famous composer and pianist of all time. Do you think anyone dares to make music around him? No one wants to compare themselves to him, whether intentionally or unintentionally. When he is not playing the piano himself, it is always quiet around him. This is the fate of the world's best pianist. Do you understand now why nobody tells me their stories? And that's why you're sitting here? So lonely and in the shade? Oh, I don't feel lonely. I have recently learned to listen and observe very carefully. I can tell you something interesting about everyone in the room. Oh, Kelly Cat. What about the guy on the chandelier? That's easy. This is Alfonso, my <laughs> best friend. The monkey? Has been by my side for years, every step of the way. Unfortunately, many years of it in a monkey's body, hence the nickname Aponzo. And, unfortunately, he just can't break the habit anymore. If he sees something that he can hang on to, then hang on to it he will. What about those two over there playing Kraken fodder? The blonde guy's name is Eric, and he's a pretty bad loser. He claims no one has really defeated him in Ow, Kraken don't. fodder. No. But he loses quite often, and then always claims that he let the other guy win. The other guy is called Not Joe, and he knows all 605 knots of the 55 knot grandmasters. I've also heard that he can untie any knot in seconds. I really hope he'll teach me that someday. What about the two lovebirds at the bar? Pete came down here at the same time as the other two guys. And he has a lot of interesting fisherman stories to tell. You wouldn't believe what he's already caught. And apparently he already has Booze Britta on the hook too. <laughs> Booze Britta? Booze Britta? Booze Britta is the sunshine in the teddies, I can tell you that. Always in a good mood. And she can drink everybody in here under the table. She must have been like this during her lifetime, too. <laughs> because, allegedly, she was buried with a bottle of hunting accident. Her absolute favorite booze. Tell me something about Antonio Leiterendi. Leiterendi has written many songs about famous people and became world famous himself. And so his time here in the afterlife is probably one of the longest of all. He plays his legendary songs here at Teddy's every day. But do you know what he does when the last guest leaves the bar? What? He takes a special sheet of music out of his briefcase of a song he wrote here in the afterlife. And then he plays this song every evening. A song for his wife. Where is his wife? Forgotten. Archived. Her time here was very short, because nobody remembers the great pianist's wife, right? No matter how important she was to him, <laughs> there is nothing that Leiterendi wishes more than to have written this song during his lifetime. Oh, he wrote songs about me, Teddy Macanelli, and many others. 
But this, the most important song for him, he wrote too late. How tragic. Wait, what's going on now? Have you screwed up anything since you've been down here? What? Your halo. It's activated. Oh, you better go to the administration right now, or you'll get into trouble. But I wanted... They can archive you at any time if you don't follow the rules. And me too if I keep chatting with you, even though your halo is activated. So, you better hurry up. There you are, my recently deceased messenger. <laughs> hey, why are you looking so mad? You... Hey, hey, hey! Don't get naughty, young lady. I am now again in possession of the holy mandate of the afterlife. If you don't make a good impression on me, I'll shred your death card and archive you. It's faster than drowning. <laughs> and what more do you want from me? Well, I wanted to say thank you for turning in Teddy's death card and ending my agonizing exile. Everything is going according to plan. <laughs> and now I'm putting things back in order here. In order? Order is the most important thing. The best way to make order is to sort out. You mean, you want to archive undead souls at random? Who is talking about doing anything at random here? Ha! Of course I do it using a defined system. Teddy's bar. Everyone who has ever entered this bar. Everyone who has ever had a beer there, played cards or sat at the piano. Anyone who even looked too long through the window into that cursed bar, every single one of them gets archived. <laughs> Ouch! What? What was that? I don't know. I. Ouch! Stop it! I can't do anything about it. I. Jesus. Oh, shit. <gasps> Was the delivery to your satisfaction? What? The delivery! Everything fine with it? No damage, delay, or other complaints! Delivery? <sighs> A stamp of the shrimp pyre was in your pocket, along with this address. I knew that was going to come back. Two packages, well tied, immediate delivery guarantee. So, everything's okay here, yeah? We have a lot to do. Uh, yes, everything is all right. Um, thanks. The shrimp pyre is at your service. Shrimp pyre, move, move, move! I was dead. The electric shocks. Of course. Teddy McAnally fell into the electric eel pool. That was the reason for his near-death experience. Experience the F5 uh, will archive everyone who's in Teddy's bar and that's all my fault. Maybe there's a way to stop. Whoa. Cocktail can't solve. Okay. Malty? He's breathing. Fortunately, he just seems to be passed out. But where is that parrot? Okay. So, do I still have it? I do. Let's see here. Near death on the beach. A personal sacrifice. Herbal liqueur. Cold ashes. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Nothing there. Can't 
go there. Oh, wait a minute. Cleo? You're alive? Were you able to save my books? Your books? No, Avery. He called me lately, let me drown on the spot. I'm very, very lucky to be alive at all. Thanks for the help, by the way. That old woman came out of nowhere. What was I supposed to do? You could have tried to warn me. You just left us behind. Left us for dead. Doesn't that sound familiar to you? And all you can think about is your stupid books. Nobody cares about your made-up stories. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I was dead, Avery. For a moment, I was really dead and saw it all. The afterlife, the administration, the archive. I was in that archive, Cleo. I was already completely forgotten until you found this book. And it looks like I'll end up there again very soon. Ikomi Lele worked in this administration and we helped her to return. So? She said she wants to put things back in order. She wants to sort out, shred countless death cards, anyone who's been in Teddy's bar. We're alive, Cleo. As long as you live, she cannot harm you. No, but... And even if she could, what are you going to do about it? I think I have an idea on how to get back one more time. Back to the afterlife? Yes, but just for a moment. That's crazy! I have no choice! Of course you have one. You had your great adventure, and you survived it. Take away, get away. Now is your chance to get away, Cleo. I'm taking it. You should take it too. Get away? You mean, just don't do anything about all of this? I didn't have this opportunity to get away back then, and I won't let it slip away again. I just can't do that. It really was an adventure, Cleo. It was fun, and that's no lie. I'm fine. Um, just get away, just as her, so I can't burn. Okay. Cocktail? He must have washed up here. What about one last drink? Oh, so everything you have has to come from that. Okay. What do we need? We got the cold ashes, herbal liqueur, and a personal sacrifice. Let's see what we've got here. Herbal liqueur. I know. Where's she at? The grave, she must... Um... The grave of booze Brit. She. Sorry, Britta. I. Okay. Herbal liqueur. Okay. Personal sacrifice. Oh my goodness. It's just you taking it. What about one last drink? Fifty 
face. What about one last drink? Sorry, I can't make a cocktail out of it. Unfortunately, I have never heard of this cocktail. <laughs> Personal sacrifice. <sighs> All right, then. What a day. Okay, so here we go. Let's get this part. Right then. Down with it. Here we go again. The cocktail's effective. It worked. Only temporarily, I hope. Doesn't matter. Oh no! She's already started! I have to stop her somehow! A pretty badly insulated junction box. The cable leads to the shredder on the table. A pretty bad. The cable. Better not go any that old woman. A pretty the A pretty the I better not go that old There is a paper clip on that now. Bingo. Okay. There we go. Oof. There we go. Oh god. Uh weird thing. Let's see if I can remember this thing. Okay. Weird thing. Where's the one that looks like a frog? Did I get it right? Oh, for fuck's sake. A 
Pretty bad. The cable leads up to... I see, I see. 1630, 1365. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so it's that, that, and horse turtle. 1365. Bingo, I think I figured it out. Oh, he's gonna mess everything up. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> hey, Ponzo. He just can't break the habit anymore. <laughs> what a mess. Chico Malayli desperately tried to catch the documents flowing around and somehow keep the overview that was so important to her. But there was something she lost sight of. The Holy Mandate. Hmm. Cleo didn't hesitate and let the powerful document glide through the shredder. Before the cocktail lost its effect, Cleo, just like Teddy Macinelli back then, took a document from the afterlife with her. But she didn't hide it. She left it for someone to see before leaving Macinelli Parms. Cleo came back home, but she never told her incredible story to anyone. She talked about Multitheus, the sailing cocktail mixer with breathtaking recipes from all over the world. She talked about not Joe. The seaman who knows all 605 knots of the 55 knot grandmasters. She spoke of Eric, the gifted Kraken fodder player who taught her all the rules and tricks and was never defeated by her. She talked about Pete, the most talented fisherman at sea, who could predict exactly when and where a shoal of fish would appear. And of course, she talked about Avery Alwick. The greatest adventurer of all time, and about how he survived a dozen Cyclops crabs and a giant black iguana. Well, back to my initial question then. What is the most important thing about a story? I think the most important thing about a story is the listener. He got his wife back. How sweet. Wow. And of course, a marvelously captivating narrator's <laughs> voice. <clears throat> I see we want to cry a little bit. Sorry. And the sense of how loud I should be I can't hear what I say Were the words even though said I meant them to be When the water got me 
And a wave pushed me into the corner Now I can't speak I'm underwater Say goodbye, say farewell To all the stories I'm not granted to tell You won't hear through the noise and the fuss And the rumble and thunder But I hope that you stay Float in the wave that had swallowed the one singing this is the developer of the game, which I think is actually quite amazing. Okay, so obviously that was Cleo a Pirate's Tale. I absolutely loved it. I think it was a great game. The puzzles weren't too hard, nor were they that far-fetched. That's a problem I see a lot in these point-and-click games is where you go through and a lot of times you get that and there's a puzzle and it, it seems like it's so easy, but it's really not. So the, the puzzles were weren't too challenging. They were actually made a lot of sense, which I appreciate a great deal. Um, I also, I mean, the story was fantastic. The animation, everything about this game, I absolutely love. I can't believe it was one person who developed this. And I think he did, I think he defines, he identifies as he. Um, did a fantastic job. I, it was amazing. I loved it. I wish it were longer, but uh, <laughs> I mean, that's all I can say about it. I'd love to see more from this developer. I'd love to play more games. I Again, I, I said this in the first episode, but I didn't know about this until right before it came out, and if I had known about the Kickstarter, I 100% would have backed it. Uh, whew. Wow. Um, that being said, I just want to say well done to the developer of this game. It, you did a very, very good job. I like I like this better than Monkey Island to be the Monkey Island series. To be perfectly honest with you, I think it was absolutely wonderful. So well done. You told a great story. You made a great game, and that's all I can say about it. Definitely try this out for yourself. It is on Steam. I think there might if it's on anything else. I'm not sure. But it is on Steam if you want to give it a shot for some. I think it might be on a few other developer platforms. I'm not sure what. And I'm not the person to ask. But check it out for yourself. 100% um, play it yourself. It is so much fun. I know there's probably other things I could go in and do. Like do some more fishing. Uh, I know there's a lot more bottles to find. You can find more messages in the bottles. I think that was actually a add-in where if you um, were a Kickstarter, you could put a message and he would hide it in the game. But, um, what, try it out for yourself. I think it's a great game. I would recommend it to any and everyone. It's fantastic. I'm kind of sad I don't get to play this anymore, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. But, uh, that's it. So, 
that being said, I'm going to leave this episode off here, and I will continue. So, um, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to jump down on that like button. If you did like it, leave a comment down below with any other game suggestions or video ideas that you'd like to see from me. Share the channel with your friends, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already to see other videos that I've done. I will see you all for the next one. Thank you.